Hello, welcome to our Tulane University Spring 2015 Birkin Road Report on continuing coverage of Denbury Resources Incorporated. My name is James Skipton, and I'm representing my fellow analysts, Charles Collins, Talia Geshwind, Claiborne McCreary, Jessica Nosenchuk, and our investment research manager. Our analyst team gives Denbury a rating of market outperform with a 12-month target price of $10. Denbury's stock performance over the past five years is visible in the graph below our target price. Although Denbury's stock recently declined with the fall in oil prices, the stock price is currently beginning to increase again. In this presentation, we are going to provide an overview of Denbury as a company, covering its corporate strategy and operations. We are also going to explain the valuation methods that we use to arrive at our 12-month target price, as well as discuss the general industry Denbury operates in. Finally, we're going to cover our investment thesis and summarize the report. We will start with some facts about Denbury. Denbury Resources Incorporated is a publicly traded company on the New York Stock Exchange and trades under the ticker symbol DNR. Denbury is an independent and domestic oil and gas exploration and production company and is based out of Plano, Texas. Although Denbury uses traditional extraction methods like most other E&P companies, Denbury focuses primarily on tertiary enhanced oil recovery, also known as EOR. Denbury operates in the Gulf Coast and Rocky Mountain regions in the seven states that are highlighted on the map. These states are Mississippi, Texas, Louisiana, and Alabama in the Gulf Coast region, and Montana, North Dakota, and Wyoming in the Rocky Mountain region. Although Denbury faces competition from other E&P companies, Denbury has limited EOR competition in its current operating regions. Denbury's initial strategy focused on acquiring properties that created value through the company through advanced tertiary oil recovery operations. The company increased operations in regions with existing CO2 reserves, CO2 transportation infrastructure, and proved oil fields. Denbury is currently shifting its cash flow allocation strategy from growth to a combination of growth and income. The company's new corporate strategy has an increased focus on income. Instead of spending capital on acquiring new properties, Denbury is focusing on improvements and operational efficiencies at its existing fields as well as paying a dividend to investors. Now I will discuss the methods we use to arrive at our 12-month target price. We arrived at our 12-month target price of $10 by taking the average of four different valuation methods. These methods are the five-year present value of estimated future revenue, or PV10, the discounted cash flows method, or DCF, the enterprise value to proved reserves barrels of oil equivalent, or EV to BOE, and finally, the enterprise value to production, or EV to production. Although PV10 is the most common valuation method in the oil and gas industry, we decided that averaging the stock prices produced by these four valuation methods provided a more complete view of Denbury's value than just using one method alone. Pictured in this bar graph are the different stock prices produced by each valuation method. The dashed green line represents Denbury's current stock price of $7.95 at the date of our report, while the red line shows our 12-month target price of $10 per share. By averaging all four of these valuation methods, we got a target price that takes into account the variables of revenue, cash flows, reserves, and production. I am now going to describe the oil and gas industry, EOR, and some trends in the market. Oil is extracted using various production techniques that usually occur in three phases. These phases are primary, secondary, and tertiary, or enhanced oil recovery. Although Denbury uses all three phases of production, the company's main focus is on tertiary enhanced oil recovery using CO2. Tertiary enhanced oil recovery can be accomplished with three different methods, thermal recovery, gas injection, or chemical injection. This image shows gas injection using CO2, which is the most popular EOR approach and the method used by Denbury. CO2 EOR involves pumping CO2 into oil-containing rock formations, which allows the gas to act as a solvent. The gas modifies the characteristics of the oil to facilitate extraction of oil that was previously unrecoverable. Relatively few companies specialize in EOR within the oil and gas industry. An important aspect of EOR is that production levels are more constant than traditional oil and gas production methods, and the decline curves are much flatter. Using EOR results in a more gradual and stable decline rate of the oil fields. For example, Denbury's natural yearly decline rate of fields of approximately 
is low when compared with other similar sized E&P companies. As a result, when oil prices are low, Denbury can limit investments into new fields and continue to generate stable production levels using its current fields. The ability to maintain stable production makes EOR a financially flexible method of oil extraction, and many companies in the industry use the flexibility of EOR to improve operational efficiency and to cope with the decline in oil prices. Changes in oil and natural gas prices greatly affect E&P companies such as Denbury. Oil and gas prices are positively correlated with E&P companies' profit, cash flow, and capital expenditures. This correlation means that these companies benefit from high oil and gas prices and generally suffer when oil and gas prices are low. If oil prices remain low for an extended period of time, companies will not have enough cash to expand their operations and may struggle with financing current projects. Since oil and gas prices are generally volatile, companies are prone to experiencing fluctuations in cash flows and capital expenditures. Next, we'll describe our investment thesis and what makes Denbury a unique oil and gas E&P company. Denbury's position in the exploration and production industry is unique because of the company's focus on CO2, EOR, commitment to paying dividends, and its low market capitalization relative to its peers. The majority of other companies that use EOR focus most of their operations on traditional, primary, and secondary recovery methods. Although Denbury also uses these methods, Denbury concentrates on regions and fields with proved reserves that can be used for EOR production. Denbury's unique reserves and focus on CO2 EOR production enable the company to reuse pre-drilled wells and extract oil when it's economically feasible. Denbury's strategy creates a niche in the ENP market, providing the company with some advantages over some larger diversified ENP companies. Growth opportunities exist for Denbury, but are heavily dependent on oil prices. Denbury has infrastructure and plans in place to increase production from its reserves when these operations become viable at higher oil prices. Derived from its EOR strategy, Denbury's operational flexibility is a major asset to the company. This flexibility allows the company to keep production constant and preserve internal growth opportunities even when it is decreasing its capital spending. Denbury's management team is currently maintaining a solid financial position for the company by minimizing its debt and funding company expenditures through operational cash flows. Management plans to cover its 2015 projected capital expenditures of $500 and its dividends of $0.25 cents a share by only using cash flows from operations. If oil prices remain low in 2016, the company might see insufficient operational cash flows to fund current capital expenditures and dividend payments. If the company does face insufficient cash flows, management indicated it will reduce capital expenditures even further before cutting its base dividend or taking on additional debt. This pie chart shows Denbury's allocation of capital expenditures for 2015. The company cut its 2015 expenditure budget to $550 million, which is roughly half of the company's 2014 capital expenditure budget. As seen in the graph, the company plans to spend $320 million on current EOR fields, $100 million on non-tertiary oil fields, $45 million on CO2 sources and pipeline construction, and only $85 million on exploration, development, and pre-production startup costs of existing properties. The company predicts production levels remain stable in 2015, but if Denbury is unable to raise its expenditures, the company may not be able to acquire additional equipment and develop reserves to maintain current production levels. As a conservative company, Denbury hedged an average of 72% of its total daily production through 2015. This large hedge position allowed the company to beat its fourth quarter 2014 adjusted net income per diluted share estimates and ensure sufficient cash flow in 2015. Even though the company holds some hedge contracts through the first two quarters of 2016, the amount as a percentage of total production is significantly less than 2015 hedge levels at only 17% of total production. Currently, hedging contracts are very beneficial to the company. In conclusion, our team gives Denbury a rating of market outperform and a 12-month target price of $10 per share. We established our target price by using different valuation methods that examine Denbury's production methods, available reserves, cash flow, capital budget, and hedging strategy. These areas of focus mitigate the impacts of low oil prices and allow for steady production and future growth. Thank you for listening to our presentation. If you would like more information about our report, you can find the full report on the Birkenode Reports website. 
The Bergen Road Reports are produced solely as a part of an educational program of Tulane University's A.B. Freeman School of Business. The reports are not investment advice. Investors should not regard the reports and presentations as recommendations to sell or buy any securities mentioned. Investors should consult an investment professional and or conduct their own primary research before making any investment decisions.